Roblox Jailbreak is perhaps a one-of-a-kind game. Throughout the years of playing, I've had one major question. Is Jailbreak pay to win? There's a lot of different ways you can pay to win in Jailbreak. The most obvious being via cash. There are options to buy cash for a flat amount of Robux. All this is overpriced. There are game paths which can give you a permanent advantage. While some of them are considered useless, others have shaped the vehicle meta, allowing you to spawn certain vehicles with no downsides. So I ask myself this. I start on a fresh account and possibly become one of the richest players, just with pay to win. Now the first thing I do is make sure to buy premium. Buying premium lets me buy as much Robux as possible. And after getting it through, I immediately went to buy a private server. A private server basically allows me to grind in peace. For 200 Robux a month, I'd say it's pretty worth it. I also went to immediately buy every single game pass I could. As I want to go all out on this challenge, I had to ask myself a serious question. Should I buy cash? I knew it was overpriced. But could it be worth getting an expensive vehicle right away? Ultimately decided not to, as I had to be stuck with the starter vehicle, the Camaro. If you don't know what the Camaro is, well, it's terrible, and I have to be stuck with it. And if I wanted to make any progress in the game, I would have to save up for 1 million, as the 1 million shop holds the best vehicles in the entire game, all good in their own right. And I thought I could grind it pretty easily, but I'd be dead wrong, as I had to make a decision. Do I continue to play on the prisoner team and struggle to get any amount of money? Or do I take a big risk and play on the police team? Because the police team is a lot different from the prisoner team. The police team has to arrest people for bounties. And if you're good enough, you can make a lot of money very quickly. Just know the entire server will hate you for doing this. You don't know what you got yourself into. I'm a leader of 60 people. I tell them to report, and they do it. And in that moment, I possibly made the worst decision to type. I stopped after that, and tested other forms of making money, such as airdrops, and I eventually got myself a level 5 engine, making my Camaro an actual decent vehicle. And by saving 92,000, I could afford my next car. This is probably the best early game card I could afford as the Shell Mark V is just a slightly better version of the Camaro. But I was about to break the game completely, and fully optimize airdrop farming to its limits, because I soon realized I could spawn in airdrops with Robux. I soon realized I could spend a majority of my Robux here, and if you spawn a lot of them, they rack up quickly, as 99 Robux spawns in just 3 of them. I was immediately making bank, but that wouldn't be the case for long. I something was about to bite me from before, because just five minutes later, I was kicked from the game for unknown reasons. Was I banned this early? No way I got mass reported. Did the game think I was cheating, or did I just lose all my progress? I spent 25000 for nothing. Well, no. I actually flagged the anti cheat because of how I farmed airdrops. Because there's a lot more to farming airdrops than it seems. Airdrops are perhaps the hardest robbery in the entire game, as you have to fight NPCs who are near unkillable and spawn almost infinitely. So players had to discover ways around it, and they discovered you could actually freeze your game. This may seem useless, but it's exactly what people needed to do. So by pressing E and freezing your game, the NPCs would be frozen. Because every airdrop would give a mansion invite, I was starting to get loaded with them, and I needed to rob the mansion now. But just like airdrops, the mansion is a whole nother story. I wanted to conquer the mansion, I have to fight and master the CEO myself. In the mansion, you have a large space to move around. 
as soon as you shoot the CO, he spawns three NPCs. This can be entirely random, and he can spawn three different NPCs every robbery. His next attack is a laser, perhaps the worst one he can use. This thing does a lot of damage and homes in on you, but it's avoidable by shooting at him behind a wall. You can also crouch under his desk and behind the chair. The second attack is his arm extension. Just like the laser, it has very similar properties to avoid it. It takes a while to charge up, making it easy to avoid. But getting hit by is a death sentence. You can actually completely ignore all of his attacks, because it's a small invisible line that you can stand on. This would put you out of range of all of the attacks, making it a very easy robbery. Not to mention the $19,000 it gives you, and a chance at a hyperchrome. If you don't know what a hyperchrome is, it basically starts at level 1, becomes much, much harder to level up each robbery. We're able to roll one time for robbery. It's run at 0.4% for a level 1, and it caps it at level 5 at 0.08%. But with CEO, it actually doubles the chances, making it even easier than robbing anything else. There's a reason why level 5s are so expensive. You make your car look very polished. And this made me want to grind CEO even more, as I want to become one of the few players with a level 5 hyperchrome. And it was pretty easy to grind the CEO. All I had to do was join small servers, and usually there was a mansion open. The mansion opens every time it's night, so it's pretty easy to rob it. I decided to open up all my saves from airdrop farming, as it can net you a lot of money from duplicate rewards. I eventually got my way up to a lot of money, and I was 1k away from a big purchase. And once I hit 600k, I could buy the Roadster. I now have the second best vehicle in the entire game. It has very high acceleration and a good top speed. And for 600k, it's practically a steal. But I could not stop there. I kept buying and opening airdrops, and I was making so much money doing this. I made 1 mil in 2 hours. That's not even supposed to happen. Normal grind never makes this much money. And I was soon realizing the potential of pay to win. I felt unstoppable, as my money just kept going up and up. Well, eventually went down. Well, that's because I was about to make a huge purchase. Before, I saw my first plan was to reach 1 million. Well, that's because it's a vehicle called the Volt Bike. It's arguably the best vehicle for grinding. It's the highest acceleration in the game, smallest hitbox, and can be spawned with the Garage Game Pass. This makes the Volt Bike extremely pay to win. With the best grind vehicle at my disposal, I was back to grind the CEO, but I wasn't alone. With my friend, we were able to speed up the robbery a lot faster. When doing this duo, it was actually two to three times faster. But what if it could be faster? Because the CEO has very weird physics. You can move him anywhere if you get under him. And if you put him next to the door, you can do this. Yeah, that is extremely fast. Being able to kill CO in just 10 seconds as a trio. That's why I made an investment to buy the jet. It costed 1 million, but it's faster than the Volt Bike to get to CO, just as long as you get the military base spawn. This is why it's better to play on the COP team, because you can spawn at one of three locations. The first being the city base, the second being the prison, and third being the military base. And well, the mansion is just right here. With the new grenade strat, I was starting to rob the mansion like crazy now. But I wasn't going to get a hyperchrome anytime soon. Despite having a close call, I was not worried one bit. Because I was going to get much, much faster at doing this. Because you could actually spawn at the military base every time. Because you can actually reset your spawn at any location. By doing this, I could get a guaranteed military base. This completely optimized how I got to CEO. But I eventually got bored of robbing CEO. And I want to go back to my roots. Fully optimized bounty hunting to its limits. As I had new vehicles to play with.
Did I feel bad? A little. But I was going to do anything to make my account richer. of money doing this making 500k in just an hour but i need to go back to the ceo this was making insane progress on my first hyper chrome and i was eventually one robbery away from hidden pity I need to hit pity. I was need to be a lot luckier to finish this challenge. It looks bad now. But it'll make do until higher levels. But this is when I start to dig in the other rabbit hole pay to win. Because emotes are another form of pay to win. They can allow you to no clip into areas you should not be in. And I heard you can glitch into robberies with this 25 Robux one. But first, I discover how to do it. And after 30 minutes of trying, I finally managed to do it. The key is wait for the emo to turn around and then crouch and hold the invite at the same time. I would also start limit testing new avatars, as I think avatars can have a premium advantage. As I soon realized, 12 avatars can easily escape the prison, shaving off up to 30 seconds just for my escape route. And this would prove very useful later on. And while testing, I'd accidentally made 50k out of nowhere. I finally discovered the perfect avatar. The default bacon here, with the city life woman likes. Even though it's free, it has a major advantage over other avatars. It can perform bugs and glitches a lot easier than others. I was also starting to get low on Robux, and my 6 million from only airdrops and mansions probably explained why. I just had 240 overflow invites. I didn't need to grind airdrops anymore. I could focus on other things now, like robbing the bank or find more glitches to the CEO. Something unexpected would happen. Because just 10 robberies later, this happened. With that, my confidence went through the roof. I had a level two hyperchrome now. What was gonna stop me? I kept on grinding for 20% in just two days. I had 200 invites. I didn't need to get airdrops anymore, but airdrops needed me. I was grinding mansion like crazy now. In 12.5 mil out of nowhere. The only thing stopping me now was time. But that wasn't the case. Because there's going to be my last CEO of robbery. Forever. February 2nd, 2024. Developers of Jailbreak will release perhaps the worst update for me. Instead of the mansion open at night, would only open when it rained. To sum this up, I was completely screwed. I couldn't rob CEO when it rained, because I never did. It's practically rain in 1 out of 20 servers, compared to being night in 10 out of 20 servers, basically being a 50-50. This was a hard blow. CEO was the only thing keeping this challenge alive. All my hard work was now wasted. Not to mention that Soul Robin was killed. 
as the door method was patched as well. CEO is officially ruined. But I could not give up. Because while they killed the mansion, they did not kill me. And if I had to rob it, I was going to have to open it myself and create something nobody has ever seen before. Even out of the 6 billion visits this game has. Because in a VIP server, you have access to a ton of commands. Most of them are very useless, but one really caught my attention. The rain command can start rain, I mean, I could rob Sino on a private server pretty easily. But there's a catch. Because private servers are very different from public servers. And you have to wait every five minutes just to even open it. Now this is where we take fully advantage of that. Because I theorized, I could buy three private servers and rob them one by one. And if I manage to get one account in each server, I could stop the servers from closing. I mean, I would have an infinite cycle of robberies. And did it work out? No. It blew my expectations out of the water. Because there's exactly enough time with three servers. And on the first day, this happened. This was insane. A level 3 on the first day. But this wasn't it. Just four robberies later, someone dropped to level 5. But I was starting to run into a problem. Because I was forced to play on the prisoner team. I mean, I needed to find a fast way to escape prison. Or I was doomed. But this wasn't a problem, as I could no clip out of the prison. Fully taking advantage of pay the win. To do it, you have to hug the fence and emote, and then instantly hold out your invite when it turns around. And this made so much money, I catapulted it to 25 mil. And we soon figured out with two all accounts, we could have three people on the police team. And we could now manipulate respawns even better. Because just like the rain command, there's actually a second command that's very useful. You can zap yourself getting a guaranteed military base spawn. But this would be nothing. Because it was about to break the game completely on accident. You have to hug the wall to no clip. I had accidentally discovered you didn't even need to emote. You can just simply hug the wall and turn around. Now this only works for city life flags, I think. It's as simple as climbing the ledge and instantly turning around. Just accidentally discovered probably the most overpowered glitch as a prisoner. While optimizing the fastest ways to get to Sia, I had to optimize the fastest way of killing the Sia, because it's a lot of guns. The big thing to know is that the unmacked guns have a fixed DPS. Mean by holding left click, you'll do the same amount of damage. But with semi-automatic, your DPS can vary vastly with how fast you click. You can do less, or a lot more. And this is most apparent on the pistol having the highest DPS unit of any guns, but with very high clicks per second, I could out DPS any gun in the weapon shop. Allowed me to do tons of DPS with headshots. Now I was brute forcing my way to a level 5. Oh my god! I managed to get a level 4, but I wasn't done yet. I was draining invites like crazy. But I was grinding like a maniac. My hopes were high. Very high. And I thought I thought I deserved a level 5. I couldn't believe it. The CEO was mocking me, laughing as I worked my way up to this point. I had to work my way from nothing. I couldn't play good, 
I had to play perfect. Even if the anti cheat tried to stop me, I had to figure out my own ways of playing. I had to open the CEO myself and discover things nobody else could even think of. I wasn't playing jailbreak. I was paying. This was a, a red level 5 hyperchrome. Because it is indeed possible to beat Jailbreak entirely pay to win. I've become one of the few players with the level 5 hyperchrome. But not also that. I have almost 400 safes to open. It will boost my cash even more. And after 30 minutes of opening safes, I had gained 5 million just from that alone. I had made so much progress on this account. I'm glad to make this far entirely pay to win. Anyways, thanks for watching, subscribe for more.